your true self affects your health. The reality is that we are very positive beings. So whenever we add negativity into our existence of who we are, it creates an internal conflict. And that internal conflict can affect your health negatively. But if you're thinking positively, if you see your failures as opportunities to achieve more, if you see your failures as a way out of a situation instead of a way in or losing and you look at the negative, but if you just change the way you think about failures, you will start to become a more successful person. A more successful person is a positive person. That becomes the nature. And that's what you want to do. You want to make being positive natural. And as natural as that becomes for you, then you have reached success. Bringing your dream to life is about making connections. Generally, when we talk about dreaming, we're talking about a vague sensation of awareness. But when we talk about life, we're talking about excitement. So when we combine the two, what we're really saying is that when you're dreaming, attach your dream to something that you're already doing, that reality, that part of your life. And dreams do come true when we associate them with things that we're already doing. But if you're just dreaming and you're not making connections, then the sad truth of the matter is that explains a lot why you're not getting to where you want to be. So dream on, but dream with a connection to what's already going on in your life. Never get into a relationship with a narcissist. Now that's just my opinion because I've been there. And the interesting thing about narcissists, they want to project everything on you. If they do something wrong, it's because of you. It's not a taking of responsibility, trust me. It's so frustrating. Do yourself a favor and run. And you can quickly tell who the narcissist is just because of their behavior. These are the three most powerful ways that you can influence another person. First, smile. That's the first thing that a person will see about you. The next thing is, say something positive. And the third is to set a good example. See, it's not about how you define yourself, but it's how based on your actions and your activity that other people define you. So if you're positive, people see that positivity, and that's how you've been able to influence them. So make a good day out of today and influence someone with all three. How to develop in your recovery. None of us are perfect. We are all works in progress. As one of my friends said, we are all developing at different levels of repair. We need help. But the way you develop when you're recovering is to always take note of those little achievements. These little achievements, when you start to put them together with the other achievements, they become one giant achievement. And you should feel good about that. But pay attention, because now when it becomes so big that you can't see the real picture, you always have these little pieces of achievements that you can refocus on. And it's that refocusing that's going to help you to develop into the power, into the force that you really are. You're great. Just keep it going. One of the best ways to impress your girl, listen to her. Just listen. She has a lot to say. She wants to be heard. Let that satisfaction just overwhelm her with joy, her desire for you to listen to her. And as she describes for you the things that she wants, then bless her. Let her have them. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I mean, don't you want things that you want to come into play? Wouldn't you like for someone to listen to you? It's real simple to do. Easy to do, easy not to do. But it's better to just do it. Listen to her. Now, studying, you have to decide if you're one or two, it's a difference. A number one person is someone who does a schedule. A number two person is someone that doesn't really have a schedule. They just have a 24-hour period that they're working with. So in order to accomplish either, it has to be managed. So you know you're going to study, but how do you manage it? Well, you manage it first with focus. You have to have laser focus. It's almost like a beam that comes from here to where you are. And if anything crosses that beam, bzz, 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 it gets knocked out of the way. Study is important. Study can change your life. Study can change your address. Study can change who your friends are and where you spend your time. So take it seriously. Keep the focus. Manage it by not allowing anything to disrupt this gold 
that you now have. We are all full of passion. But to find your passion, that's a skill. Several ways you can go about it. First way, make a list. Make a list of the things you like. Another good way to find out what your passion is, ask someone who's close to you. Where do they seem to think you are spending the most of your time? Where are you placing most of your energy? What is it that you talk about a lot? See, sometimes it's very difficult to evaluate yourself, but others are always evaluating us. You might think you like vanilla ice cream, but all your friends ever see you eating is chocolate. So the bottom line is, if you want to find out what your passion is, there's nothing wrong with talking to your friends. A lot of times we try to do this thing solo. Sometimes it's the meeting of the mind. Meet up the minds with your friends and find out what your passion is. How to improve your mindset. This is really not that complicated. A lot of people, they go through life and they learn this way. They don't move. But if you can remember when you were a child, you were always in motion. So you change your mindset. It's change. That means you're going to make movement. So it's not like just bobbing your head. It's just moving your whole body. So get your whole body involved in your thought processes. Get your whole body involved in your solutions. Get your whole body involved in your everyday activities and just kind of keep moving. Keep moving. And you can compare this to when you're stiff. When you're stiff, you're not flexible. See, it's about that movement. And you can change your mindset just by being flexible, putting some movement there. And you'll go from thinking one way to a more balanced way of thinking because this is what satisfies your brain. The brain likes movement. So move and change the way you think. But how can you take it to the next level? Well, the first thing is understanding that confidence is an attribute of the brain. The brain will either excuse or accuse us in a favorable way. So if you have confidence and you want to improve your confidence, you need to make some things clear to your brain. And the first thing is, why are you doing a certain thing? See, you have to give your brain a reason, realistic in life, as to why you are attempting whatever it is that you're interested in. And the second thing is, you have to warm up the brain. Just like if you were running in a race, you're going to warm up so that you don't hurt yourself. So you have to be in a protective way for the brain. Build up confidence. Let the brain know you're not going to hurt itself. And then thirdly, you want to be honest. Honesty with who you are and where you're going. That's how you build your confidence. Learn to succeed by staying in motion. Succeed is a progressive work. It has to do with time. It has to do with movement. It has to do with going in the forward direction. And you can learn by paying attention from where you just left. Where you just left, that's the past. Where you are now, that's the present. Where you're going to is succession. Hey, don't stop.